Hi, welcome to my site presentation on the topic of a case study of engaging pre-service teachers with diverse teens through virtual reality in a community library. I am Candice Cho, a faculty at the Teacher Education Department at the School of Education at, Edu at the University of St. Thomas. My research interests are online blended mobile learning, virtual reality, and digital equity. According to the National Center for Educational Statistics, in 2014, students of color become the majority in public school and the number continues to grow. And yet, teachers candidate in predominantly white university felt ill-prepared to work with diverse learners. Therefore, I propose a service learning project uh, to help pre-service teachers using technology to engage diverse learners in a local community library. The purpose of this study is to examine the perceptions of teacher candidates and community partners on the opportunities and challenges of participating in a service learning project. This project aims at enhancing teacher candidates' capabilities in working with diverse teens and providing access and advanced technology for teen users in library space. There are three research questions. What are the opportunities or benefits of participating in this community engagement project? What are the challenges in participating in this community engagement opportunities? And what are the recommendations for continuous improvement by all stakeholders, including uh, the participants and the library coordinator? This service learning project is designed based on this conceptual framework proposed by Tinkler Tinkler. The reciprocal partnership for social justice conceptual framework focuses on four key areas. First, community members, including partners, have should have an active role and voice. Second, the development process is mindful of empowerment and advocacy. Three, reflection activities should be embedded in the project to enhance awareness of strengths. Four, service learning projects should address authentic community needs in concert with learning objectives. So we, I work with a local community library. They have a create tech studio once a week for two hours. They invite teen learners coming to the library space to try different new technology gadget. The motto is Homago, hanging out, messing around, and geeking out. So I propose a four-week service learning project uh, so our students can learn how to use virtual reality in a library space and the teens will have access to advanced technology to learn different content. Five students from my online course on learning design with technology course volunteer for this project. And this project is also one of the key assignments in this course. We well, use the case study research design method to conduct this research. Uh, and I collect data from five participants, three females and two males. And also there's a library teen specialist who was with me from the beginning to help coordinate the task and make sure we address the needs of the library and the teens. I collect data weekly reflection journal from the students I have then talked about what are the opportunities this week and what are the challenges, what are the learning tasks they have designed, and what are their recommendations for each week. And also at the end of each session, we also have 10 minutes of reflection. Students can verbally talk about what they think about that day's session. And I also keep a log of my observation of the teen and students, my student interaction and the opportunities and challenges. So what are my findings? There are four opportunities. I notice there's an increased confidence and knowledge about teaching. My student, the pre-service teacher candidate, recognized this experience 
help them prepare for their future classrooms. They talk about the contribution from participating in this community engagement opportunity is for diversity and cultural awareness. Since the university is overwhelming white, and youth that participate at the library create are all students of color, so it's a good match for them. And learner engagement, um, this project helped to cultivate relationship with teens and engage them in specific tasks. Proved to be valuable experience for most participants. A teacher candidate reflected that this is such a great low stakes opportunity for us to engage with and learn from the students. The third opportunity is a contribution to the needs of the community library. Many participants enjoy their service to the library. The library coordinator affirmed the contribution of the teacher candidates and commented that there is a lot of benefits for people who do not have access to those things, refer to the virtual reality equipment. And we were able to use them freely and experiment with them across multiple weeks that really take ownership in that. The fourth opportunity is active participation of community partners. The project team work with the community partners uh, in various stages from pre-planning meetings to identify the needs of the library and to map out, map out weekly schedules and, and also review the weekly activity, taking inputs from everyone and revise the activity as we move on. So it's a very active process of all stakeholders participating in the project. What are the challenges? Well, number one is the content. We use a uh, virtual reality headset from Class VR, which comes with a lot of ready-made VR content and lesson plans uh, by different disciplines and different grade levels. Um, however, it's still very limiting, especially on culturally relevant material. The students we work with are mostly diverse learners from different backgrounds, and we try to find content that's relevant to them, and it's almost they, they don't exist. So, um, so that's one challenge. The second challenge is, is learner connections. While some participants were excited about making connection with the teens, they were also aware of their knowledge gap in working with teens from different cultures. The lack of prior knowledge could limit their abilities to fully connect with learners, especially given a short time, only four weeks in the library. One teacher candidate summed up his experience stating that the biggest challenges are that I am still new to VR, very new to this space, and have to really and had have not really had much an opportunity to work with Somali learners before. So that's one challenge. The third challenge is technical issues. VR content requires a large network bandwidth to stream the contents. The library has limited network capacity to allow multiple VR streaming connections. And we brought in our own Wi-Fi network, and, and yet it's still not enough to beef up the connection. So what's our recommendations? Um, if we will we have time to do this again. We will have more learner-centered activities and contents, meaning to bring VR camera to have students reproduce their own video and then share. We did do that, but we couldn't get enough students to or enough teens to use the VR camera because it's a very tedious process, um, multiple steps, and it's it's not a very user-friendly process. So we were not able to create more learner center content and activities. And the second recommendation is to find more compatible technology and robust network. At the early stage of adopting VR for learning, we find that many of the VR technology are not compatible with each other, and the contents are device specific. The learning curve to produce user-generated content for specific VR technology can be steep. 
Having access to robust networks should also be a prerequisite for integrating VR technologies. In conclusion, the project met its original goal to provide mutually beneficial outcomes for teacher candidates to gain knowledge in both technology integration and working with diverse learners, and for the library to gain access to cutting-edge technology for users. However, through this process, we also learned it's important to create authentic learning opportunities with culturally relevant activities to lay the foundation for learner engagement. These are the references cited in this presentation. And here's my contact information. Please feel free to send me comments or suggestions or questions through my university email at cccho.us.thomas.edu. Thank you for watching this presentation.